All right, so one man who's been super impressive this year is Natnal Tetsvatsyon. Now, he got his first pro win in Europe this year, but also he looked really, really good in um, some other races. This is Tour of Rwanda pretty early on. He's in the leader's jersey in that blue, light blue jersey uh, that uh, is, yeah, basically similar to the Rwanda flag. You can see it's going up the mood of Kigali, which is going to be the world champs in 2024. Uh, and yeah, he's looking really strong. This is sort of the, the break. A lot of people trying to get away. He had quite a he had an okay gap. He didn't actually win a stage in this tour of Wanda. He has won stages in the past. Uh, but again, you can see coming up here, he's just following everyone. He knows that, to be honest, all he needs to do is just stay in the, in the front group and it's all good. You can see people going backwards here, left, right and center. So I think it's also important to talk about who Netnar Tatsfatsion is in terms of a rider. Like, is he a puncher? Is he a climber? Is he a sprinter? Well, you know, he's got top tens in Giro d'Italia's flat, like bunch sprints, right? He's also won a mountaintop finish as well. So I would say I think he's more of a puncher. I originally thought he would be a similar mold to Gomai, where he's a good classics rider. I don't see that as much. It seems like he's really good at bunch flat sprints, maybe because of positioning gets a good draft. Obviously, he's never. I don't think he's really won a big one recently. But I think the climbing, he is really good. Obviously, this stage is pretty punchy. But you can see he's coming to the line here. He doesn't actually manage to take the win. I think he might have gifted this. Uh, to the Ukrainian rider, you can see here he's not really competing. I think he probably could have had this, but he's in the leader's jersey and he got some more time, so it makes sense to cooperate with them. This is GP Industria e Artiginato, a very hilly one-day race in Italy. It's a dot pro race, so pretty hard. You can see him in third wheel looking really chill, and I think these races are really where I think he's going to excel. Obviously, you know, being in Italy, uh, he's used to this type of racing, but I also think you know he's following Vendrame there. Um, as well as some of the other strong riders like Diego Ulissi. But I, I do think maybe he'll be more of an Ulissi type of rider. Is he good on the long climbs? I'm just not sure. He he hasn't shown unbelievable performances. But then in Turai Romani, he finished in the front group and they went up like an hour long to climb. Obviously, that's only a 2.1, but he's still looking really, really strong. And I think it'll be interesting to see where he goes. There's room he's going to trek, which I think could be good. I think, you know, being on a proper bike and having proper nutrition and all the rest of it, you know, it's it's always cliched, but I think it does make a difference, especially uh, for someone like him. So I think also if he's on the same team as Gebra Zabia, that would be quite good. So this attack actually flies. Uh, this is Eli Jesper, I'm pretty sure. And it will see who go on the attack. No one can actually follow it, but they do a big chase on the descent in order to get back on. And I think Tets Fatsun's always quite smart. He never really goes with people on the climbs. He always makes sure he's front group, but he never actually does any attacking because he knows he has the sprint. And I guess that's the luxury for him is that he can really play in some ways quite conservative uh due to the fact that he knows his sprint you can see the big bunch is coming back together um and he actually managed to get a pretty good result in a race like this i really hope he does go well tour, but we'll we're yet to see he's quite young he's 23 years old i'm pretty sure so got a pretty bright future ahead of him i'll be interested to see how he develops he could also be someone uh maybe like Higita would be my prediction uh, maybe someone like that, who, you know, is good on the long climbs, but actually super, super punchy as well. Be interested to see how he does in Mio de Cui. You can see him coming on the right hand side. He launched the sprint really, really early. You can see Ulysses is leading it out. Uh, and he actually managed to come on the just on the left hand side. We'll show the helicopter shot in a minute. But he actually gets a good result coming forth here, uh, which again, I think is in this company is, is pretty decent. So if you look on the overhead shot, Ulysses is coming really, really strong. But look at Ted Spatsy on the right hand side of your screen. He is absolutely flying. He managed to get, he gets squeezed to be fair quite a bit, but still managed to hang on for fourth. So again, this is Giro de Lapanino, another one dot pro race. Uh, he's looking really strong here. Louis Meinkies was on fire at this time of the season and he went really, really hard. And you can see Tets Fatsun is following here, but he always lets other people follow. He's tactically very savvy. He doesn't really go into the red too much. It seems like uh, when he doesn't have to, but you can see he actually decides it's time to close the gap. But he always looks very chill and very relaxed from the pedals. Here are some other of the big name hitters who are trying to get in across. Actually, Paul Double managed to get into the into the break as well, which is strong from him. And I'm pretty sure that's Ben Hermans as well uh, for Israel. So again, like, you know, a decent company um, and really starting to show that he has actually got a super good sprint. And we skip a little bit further ahead. There's a Keeper Kern Farmer guy here as well. Uh, and, you know, it's a decently hilly race. It's not mount, It's not like, you know, going up super, super long climbs. But at the same time, they're, they're long enough that it definitely is going to test your climbing ability. You can see they are in a big ring pretty far down the block. So it's definitely a, a quick climb, which I think, despite him being quite light, maybe 58, 60 kilos, I think the faster climbs, obviously more drafting. You can see he responds straight to the attack across here. 
and he uh, is attacking across to get back up to Louis Meinke's, um, you know, turning Alexander Verne. Look out, he's all over the bike. Tetsvatsyan looks so smooth, um, has a really nice pedaling action. And anyway, Simon Clark was the Israel guy, and they're on the flat here, 8.6k to go. Paul Double, the king, is there as well. And uh, basically, Mikey's attack. So, we, we, you know, there's no real point showing that. This is a Tetz Fatsuan video. So we'll sprint, we'll hop to the sprint. You can see he's basically surrounded by climbers. I mean, Simon Clark, to be fair, has got a big kick. And uh, won a stage of, you know, at Paris Bay um, in the Tour de France. But you can see Tetz Fatsuan goes here. George Zimmerman or Georg Zimmerman has a good sprint. But Tetz Fatsuan comes straight past. And like, cheers for coming. This is an absolute demolition of a sprint. He leads out for so long. And it was almost baller style how long he's he's going for. Um, but he managed to get second place again, um, which was a very good result in this company. And um, it was a shame he didn't get the win, but you know, that's the issue when you've got two guys from World Tour teams uh, in the lead. They're going to try and want to you as much as possible. You can see the sort of people he beat there. Now, this is one of his, this is his best win. Uh, Adriatic Ionica, stage two up to Monte Grappa. It was a pretty hard race. And um, he's got his mate, Cepeda on the front. He's adjusting his sunnies. We've got 2k to go. It's a very rampy climb, which suits him quite a lot. You can see behind him the sort of downhill they came on and then turned up to the, onto this little last stretch. And I think Cepeda was really trying to get away on his own, uh, more for the GC, because uh, I think Promsky is there and as well as people Zanna, who's in the leader's jersey. And you can see there's attacking left, right, and center. And again, uh, for Tetz Fatsion, he, he doesn't need to respond too much because he does have a climb behind him. But actually, you can see he's straight on the wheel, looking pretty chill. And again, he has this advantage in every single situation where he doesn't need to do anything. He doesn't need to attack. He just needs to be there at the end because this sprint is so much better than everyone else. He's done about 1,050 watts for 15 seconds, which at 58, 60 kilos is absolutely bonkers. And we're now getting into the last couple of kilometers. Cepeda's on the front, just drilling it. He's super strong now, rides for EF Education. And, you know, when he's he's setting a tempo like this, no one's going to attack because it's pointless. So there's multiple Bardiani riders there. But to be honest, it's it's obvious that Tetz Fatsun will win this because it's just not even close how much better he is at sprinting compared to anyone at this race um, who can climb this well. I mean, even, you know, who, who, who is getting top seven, top 10 in pure bunch sprints and then climbing like this? It's, it's an unbelievable thing. And I think it's something that's super unique to Tetz Fatsun. Uh, there aren't many other riders really who can do it. And you see we're going into the final closing meters of the stage. And uh, Valen Pronsky, I believe, uh, for Astana is still there. Um, and the other guys, you know, they're all, they're all climby type of boys, not super punchy. And when Tatsvatsion decides to go, um, well, Zana goes first. Tatsvatsion, like, waits for the Astana lad, hops behind him. Like, he's not even properly sprinting. And then when he actually comes out uh, and decides it's time to go, he dusts them off. He goes the long way around and like, cheerio, thanks for coming. It's like quite an easy win in the end, to be honest. But yeah, Eritrean fans going absolutely mental on the sideline. But yeah, it's, uh, it was good to see, to be fair. Tats Fatsun has a lot of gas when it comes to those uphill finishes. Reminds you of almost a prime Bala. Bala Higita, maybe the people I'd say most similar to. So this is the Eritrean national champs. He got in the early break. It was quite a hard race, to be fair. Um, and then he got in the break with Kudus and he actually could have won this race, but he decided that it was probably better to not, um, or I think Kudus is uh, like, they're good mates and Kudus, you can see attacking here, trying to get away from, from Tets Fatsion, but Tets Fatsion was strong enough to, to respond, but I don't think could pull too much. Uh, so basically he just, he just let him have it, which was pretty, pretty big from Tets Fatsion, to be honest, because, uh, you know, that's, it takes a lot of, you know. Uh, being a good bloke, to be honest, uh, in order to, in order to give a race like that away. But anyway, we're sort of going to come to the final of the race, and uh, well, there's no real point me saying any more. He gives the race away uh, to Kudus, comes second again, but it's really, really strong. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to see him on tracks like Afredo next year, and hopefully he can get some banging results because uh, he's a guy I've followed for quite a long time. He's always been getting good results, and he definitely deserves a World Tour contract.